Polish Jews are relocated from surrounding areas to Krakow beginning in late 1939, shortly after World War II begins, when the German army defeats the Polish army in three weeks. Oskar Schindler, Liam Neeson, a successful businessman, arrives from Czechoslovakia with the intention of manufacturing enamelware for the German military, using the abundant cheap labor force of Jews. Schindler, an opportunistic member of the Nazi party, lavishes bribes on army and SS procurement officials. Schindler purchases a factory for the production of army mess kits and cooking utensils, which is sponsored by the military. He makes contact with Itzhak Stern, Ben Kingsley, a functionary in the local Judenrat, Jewish Council, who has contacts with the now underground Jewish business community in the ghetto, despite not knowing much about how to properly run such an enterprise. They lend him the money for the factory in exchange for a small percentage of the profits, for trade on the black market. Schindler opens the factory, appeasing the Nazis and reveling in his newfound wealth and status as her director, while Stern handles all administration. Stern advises Schindler to hire Jews rather than Poles because they are less expensive the Jews themselves get nothing. The wages are paid to the Reich. Workers at Schindler's factory are permitted to leave the ghetto, and Stern falsifies documents to ensure that as many people as possible are deemed to essential by the Nazi bureaucracy, saving them from transport to concentration camps or even death. Amon Goth, Ralph Fiennes, arrives in Krakow to begin work on a labor camp in the nearby town of Paso. The SS quickly liquidates the Krakow ghetto, sending in hundreds of troops to clear out the cramped quarters and shoot anyone who protests, is uncooperative, elderly or infirm, or for no reason at all. Schindler is deeply moved as he watches the massacre from the hills overlooking the area. Nonetheless, he takes care to befriend Goth, and he continues to enjoy the SS support and protection thanks to Stern's attention to bribery. The camp is located outside of town in Paso. During this time, Schindler bribes Goth into allowing him to build a subcamp for his workers in order to keep them safe from the guards' depredations. Eventually, an order from Berlin arrives, instructing Goth to exhume and destroy all bodies of those killed in the Krakow ghetto, demolish Paso, and transport the remaining Jews to Auschwitz. Schindler prevails upon Goth to let him keep a his workers so that he can move them to a factory in his old home of Zvidobrinlitz, in Moravia, away from the Final solution, now fully underway in occupied Poland. Goth agrees, charging a set fee for each worker. Schindler and Stern compile a list of workers who should be kept off the trains bound for Auschwitz. These skilled inmates are included on the Schindler's list, and for many in Paso, Inclusion means the difference between life and death. Schindler also plays a high card draw game for one of the workers, Helen Hirsch, who had been working as Gotha's housekeeper and had been a victim of his constant abuse. Goth is hesitant, wanting to flee with her, but knowing that doing so would result in his death as well as hers. He also considers simply executing her but ultimately decides to play Schindler for Helen's sake. Helen is one of the passengers on the train to Brinlitz. With the exception of the train carrying the women and children, which is accidentally redirected to Auschwitz, all of the men on Schindler's list arrive safely at the new site. The women are led to what they think is a gas chamber 
after a harrowing experience in which their hair is crudely cut off and they are forced to strip naked, they see only water falling from the showers. The women are shown waiting in line for work the next day. Meanwhile, Schindler had rushed to Auschwitz to solve the problem and get the women out. To that end, he bribes the camp commander, Rudolf Haas, Hans Michael Reberg, with a cache of diamonds, allowing him to spare all the women and children. However, a final issue arises just as all of the women board the train, when several SS officers attempt to hold back some children and prevent them from leaving. Schindler, who is present to personally supervise the boarding, steps in and is successful in obtaining the children's release from the officers. When the Schindler women arrive in Svitabrinlitz, Schindler imposes strict controls on the Nazi guards assigned to the factory. Summary executions are prohibited, as is abuse of workers, and Nazi guards are not permitted on the factory floor. Schindler also allows Jews to observe the Sabbath and spends a large portion of his fortune amassed in Poland bribing Nazi officials. In his hometown, he surprises his wife during Mass by telling her that she is the only woman in his life, despite having been shown previously to be a womanizer. She accompany him to the factory to help him. He runs out of money just as the German army surrenders, effectively bringing the war to an end in Europe. Schindler, a German Nazi and self-described profiteer of slave labor, must flee the approaching Soviet Red Army. He packs a car in the middle of the night and bids farewell to his workers after dismissing the Nazi guards to return to their families. They give him a letter explaining why he is not a criminal, as well as a ring engraved with the Talmudic quote, He who saves the life of one man saves the entire world. Schindler is moved, but heartbroken, believing he could have done more to save many more lives. He flees with his wife in the middle of the night, dressed as a Polish prisoner and posing as a refugee. The Schindler Jews are awakened by sunlight the next morning after sleeping outside the factory gates all night. A Soviet dragoon arrives and informs the Jews that the Red Army has liberated them. The Jews walk to a nearby town in search of food. According to a title card, Schindler was declared a righteous person by Yad Vashem in Jerusalem and planted a tree on Israel's Avenue of the Righteous, which is still growing today. The fate of Goth is also depicted. He was captured near the German town of Bad Tolls and taken back to Paso, where he is hanged for crimes against humanity after remaining defiant to the end and announcing his allegiance to Hitler. As the surviving Schindler Jews walk side by side, the frame shifts to another of the Schindler Jews in the present day, in color, at Oscar Schindler's grave in Israel. The film concludes with a procession of now-aged Jews who worked in Schindler's factory, each of whom places a stone on his grave with reverence. The actors who play the major characters walk hand-in-hand hand with the people they play, placing stones on Schindler's grave as they go. The late Itzhak Stern's wife is escorted by actor Ben Kingsley, and Schindler's wife is escorted by Caroline Goodall in her wheelchair. The audience learns that the survivors and descendants of the approximately 1,100 Jews sheltered by Schindler now number over 6,000. The Jewish population of Poland, which had once numbered in the millions, was estimated to be around 4,000 at the time of the film's release. A man, Nissen himself, though his face is obscured, places a pair of roses on the grave and stands contemplatively over it in the final scene. Please subscribe my channel. 
Thanks for watching this video.